Hey guys, it's History Behind the Warrior, and welcome to the final History of video for 2021. So with that said, I hope you are all doing well during these festive holidays, as this year finally comes to a close. Now, with us having already touched on Zeus and Hades from the Pantheon of Olympus, it was only right that we cap off the big trio by talking about the final member of Olympus's Big Three, a son of Kronos and King to Atlantis. Poseidon. But before we do get the ball rolling here, if possible guys, let's try getting this video to about 500 likes, as it's a great way of not only supporting this video, but the channel as a whole. It really does go a long way. Plus, if you like what we do here and wish to see more, don't forget to tick that bell and subscribe, as it is a way to keep up to date with all of my content. But without any further ado, let's begin, shall we? Now for us to talk about Poseidon, we must first know not only go back to the world of Greece, but far back before the creation of Olympus. At the dawn of time, there were the great beings of the universe, known as the Primordials, grand cosmic deities that would wield reality at their will. However, despite their strength, in time, they would be overthrown by their own kin, the somewhat second generation of primordials, the Titans. With Kronos leading the charge, their predecessors were nearly wiped out, and so the Titans reigned supreme. This went on for eons, and many of the Titans would go on to sire children, with their leader Kronos having many with the Titaness Rhea. So yes, this is where Hades, Zeus, and of course Poseidon does come from. Peace was some were ushered in, but this would fall into madness very quickly. Kronos, having learned of a prophecy foretelling the downfall of the Titans by the hands of his children, would try to avert fate by actually eating them, and he was successful in doing this, but one of the children escaped his grasp. As decades passed by, Zeus would learn to hone his powers, and eventually, upon his return, free his brothers and sisters from Kronos. Following this, the trio of Zeus Zeus, Hades, and Poseidon would lead the charge against the Titans. It was a long and hard-fought battle, with Poseidon battling the likes of Atlas. But in due time, with the blade of Olympus on their side, the Titans would fall and the gods would rise. To somewhat assert their new position as overseers and guardians of this world, the gods would create a home on the highest mountain in all of Greece, dubbing it Olympus. And as a reward for their hard work, the gods would split the world of man as a reward for their efforts against the Titans. Zeus would take Olympus, Hades would take the underworld, and Poseidon would take Atlantis, becoming the guardian of the sea. As the years passed by, peace settled across all planes of reality, with the world of mortals now flourishing. It was during this time where Poseidon settled down with the goddess of the sea, Amphitrite. But of course, these are Greek gods. So whilst Poseidon loved his wife, the god was known to have affairs with mortals, and even in some case monsters. Now, Poseidon's next appearance is centuries later, in the God of War 2010 comic tie-in series, where we see a gathering amongst the gods. You see, here, the gods have grown tired of their roles as protectors of man, and thus wish to create their own entertainment from their suffering. So, Poseidon and his fellow gods would create what could only be described as a battle royale of sorts, with each god picking a champion from a different area of Greece and have them battle it out as they track down the ambrosia of Asclepius. To motivate each champion, the gods would have their respective homes be ravaged by famine or disease, so they needed the ambrosia. Now as this skirmish tore throughout Greece, Poseidon would back a Pharaon champion, one by the name of Herodias, and whilst he was able to claim the lives of many in the name of Poseidon, he would eventually fall to the hand of the Spartan known as Kratos. So the Elder God was eliminated rather early from the Battle Royale, and in a salt-driven rage, he would unleash his wrath on Kratos, wanting to drown his Spartan army by crushing their ships. But the Spartan and his troops are able to slip through his grasp. Now a decade or so does pass by when Poseidon makes his presence known once again. In between between this time, 
A fair bit has gone on in the world of God of War. The Spartan Kratos had become a servant of the God of War Ares, destroyed the Furies, and had broken his oath to the God of War. Now, whilst Kratos was freed from the God's grasp, he himself wanted vengeance, as the warmonger had fooled the Spartan into killing his own family. And we finally get to see this vengeance acted upon during the first God of War game, with Ares having finally stepped out of line, waging a war on Athens before planning a siege on Olympus, the gods, by the choice of Athena, decided that they required a champion to deal with their dirty work. Someone that could end Ares without sullying their own hands. And well, as you can probably tell, this task would fall into the lap of Kratos. Approached by Athena, Kratos was given the opportunity to redeem himself in not only the eyes of the gods, but also himself. Still guilt-ridden over the death and fall of his family, once this quest was presented to him, he instantly accepted it. But knowing the limitations of the Spartan, Kratos was advised by the goddess to seek out what is known as Pandora's box, as it would be filled with a form of power that would allow Kratos to slay his former master. Whilst I haven't elaborated on it, let's talk about Pandora's box, as it is a pretty instrumental plot device to the Olympus trilogy of games. Now, not long after the defeat of the Titans, a sort of evil energy known as the Madness of the Titans would spring forth into the world of man. This energy would corrupt and poison all that it came into contact with. Whomever it touched would turn into a venomous shell of who they once were. So, to stop this evil from spreading, Zeus would have his son Hephaestus create a box that could contain this madness, and to guarantee that this evil would be stopped. Stopped. Once the evil was contained, Athena would cast into the box what is known as the power of hope to suppress the evil inside. So the plan was, once Kratos opened Pandora's box, he would be the one to absorb the evils of it, and then go on to defeat Ares. But quite the opposite would happen, as I soon will touch on. During Kratos' quest to avenge his family, he would actually be assisted by Poseidon. Having a strong disliking towards Ares, he would grant Kratos with the ability known as Poseidon's Rage. This weapon would become an important part of Kratos' toolkit, as during his hunt, an obstacle in his way that he needed to vanquish was a Hydra, a being seen by many as unstoppable. But with Poseidon's rage in hand, the serpentine terror would be defeated. And following this point, Kratos would go on to slay Ares. But a horrible event would transpire. Whilst, yes, Kratos was able to obtain his revenge, upon opening the contents of Pandora's box, the Spartan had not just unknowingly unleashed the madness of the Titans, but also the power of hope. He had absorbed the very opposite of what Athena had intended. So, with Kratos now filled with hope, the evil of the Titans would spread throughout the land poisoning and influencing all of the gods across the mortal and immortal plane. No one was safe, not even Poseidon. Whilst it isn't explored too heavily in game, we do know that Poseidon grew a paranoid and angry towards his brothers, believing that they thought lesser of him and that the Pantheon would one day abandon him. This anger would simmer beneath the surface, and whilst never acted upon, did sow the seeds of doubt for possibly Poseidon's own betrayal, something that we just sadly do not see come to fruition. Now, the God of the Sea's next chronological appearance is during God of War Ghost of Sparta. In between the events of the first game and this spin-off game, a lot of events do transpire. The gods have slowly become more villainous and unstable, and Kratos is finally able to ascend to godhood, now having become the new god of war. In this installment, Kratos is currently pursuing the fate of his family, so to understand what has become of his brother, he must first track down his mother Callisto, and this takes him to the city of Atlantis. Once here, he learns from his mother how his brother Deimos was kidnapped by Ares and Athena. So, with the truth now revealed, his allegiance towards the gods is instantly soured, and in a spiteful fit of rage, he unleashes the titan Fira so she can turn Atlantis to dust and 
ashes. After Atlantis has fallen, Kratos would be confronted by his furious uncle, who curses his actions and says that he will pay for his disrespect towards him and the gods. And these words would reign true in the following installment, as Poseidon isn't seen once again in Ghost of Sparta. So, the king of the former Atlantis would make his first official and final appearance in God of War 3. Whilst absent in the second game, a number of events do unfold, and this largely comes from the fact that Kratos had finally snapped as he was betrayed by his own father Zeus. Now on the warpath against the gods, Kratos would side with their greatest enemies and attempt to bring an end to Olympus and all that sat there. During this second war, Poseidon is one of the very first gods to engage the titans in battle, instantly killing the likes of Empetheus. As he emerges from the base of the mountain, we see that he is in a new elemental form, and imbued with such incredible power, he is able to not only go toe to toe against Gaia, a primordial herself, but also battle Kratos at the same time. Here he attempts to drag the two to the depths of the ocean, wanting to drown them out, and whilst he is able to impale Gaia numerous times, severely injuring her, with the assistance of Kratos, Poseidon is not only only defeated, but is also brutally killed by his nephew, being beaten to a bloody pulp before his eyes are gouged out, and finally his neck is snapped. With his death and his body cast into the ocean, it is here where we see the ocean rage as it rises and swallows the life of millions. Whilst this may mark an end for Poseidon, his death is a tone setter for the rest of God of War 3, making it known that whomever the god may be, they are not safe from the clutches of the vengeful Kratos. Whilst he largely operates as a side character, character, he is still a member of Olympus's Big Three, and his power cannot be denied. The intense opening of the third game really shows just how much of a formidable force he is, as it took the combined might of Gaia and Kratos to stop him. Whilst his appearance was short, it was very much so sweet. In saying that everyone, that has been it for the history of Poseidon. This was a very fun one to explore, and does cap off the Big Three gods of Olympus. Olympus. However, do not be saddened, as it will not be the end for the Olympian gods, as we still do have so, so many to cover. And this includes the likes of Kratos' somewhat forgotten brother, so we will probably be kicking off the new year with a shadow from Kratos' own past. But if you have any other suggestions yourselves, please do leave them down in the description below. Now, just before I do head off guys, just a heads up that I will be taking the next week off. With the new year on the horizon, I want to get fit and well, so that way I can recuperate and not feel burnt out in the new year. So, there will be more content on the way, I just want to make sure I'm fresh and good to go right out of the gate. But for now everyone, as always, stay strong, stay well, and keep on fighting as Ragnarok comes for us all. Take care everyone, happy holidays.